There are such universal themes in, in the Star Wars stories. It reflects the world we actually live in, in its inclusiveness and diversity, and, uh, and themes of good against evil. And it's, it's fascinating to experience that as a child, you know, to have your imagination so enriched by these stories. Um, and then now as an adult to look back and rekindle my relationship to Star Wars. It was beyond being groundbreaking, Star Wars was. It was, in its own way, um, again, like a crack into some sort of other universe that, that I hadn't been exposed to. So it was, uh, it was pretty phenomenal, uh, not only w what it was at the time, but what it has become. The Mandalorian, whose name is Din Djarin, um, is your iconically cool, flawed, mysterious loner gunslinger that harkens to the best of the samurai movies and the westerns. The show to me in the most basic storyline is about a man who's been following um, a way of life and has that way of life sort of upended by the introduction of the baby. And I think he's reevaluating his priorities and what, what means something to him. And this little, you know, being is suddenly helping him and then challenging him. And I think it starts to make the gears in Mando's head wonder, what am I doing here and where is my line? What I've lost this idea of, you know, being a mercenary or being a person. I love the opportunity uh, to make him as, as, as human and as accessible as possible, which is strange to say because it's impossible to get to him because he's covered in armor from head to toe. And, and yet, um, the idea is that, you know, he's relatable. We're all kind of covered in our own armor, you know, and terrified of taking that armor off. And that's the thing that, that crosses him over um, into a character that we're all going to really want to follow. In this case, since there's real things on the set, we have real cameras and real people. And now instead of having a green screen, they have to move around in light, which took forever. And that was really the frustration that led to these innovations, which was how could we do that without green screens next time? And so that led to, do you have a green stage? Do you have pre-lit green areas that you could expose? And, and then it turned into these video walls. I mean, I just think the key is you hire good people. I mean, obviously, to have done the work that they've all done. They're all really talented. I think because like this is so new to many of us that we all kind of get together on it and it becomes a real team thing. This new technology brings filmmaking back where it has been and where it should be. You can pick up a camera on your shoulder and, and do a, uh, some sort of a choreography between your actors and uh, the parallaxes of the background will be organized. You see the set and the actors see the set and they sense it and they feel it. And this is fantastic. Filmmaking back where it should be.